about who our amazing guests are. And I would love it. Snow, why don't you tell folks kind of your background, what you're building, and where you are in this journey? Awesome. Okay. So I am a first-generation, non-traditional med student. I was just accepted um, a few weeks ago. <laughs> Um, I had been a teacher for about seven years. I taught middle school math, a little bit of science. Very odd. Um, I started off very low. I didn't think that I would be able to make it to medical school, and here I am. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, and, and so kind of going back to when you said, like, there are students who have these amazing GPAs and these amazing MCAT scores who still don't get in because they haven't you know, become more holistic. I think what's wonderful and what I think most of people are hearing is that you really know your story. Like you were able to really tell that story. So how, how important do you think that storytelling is in that interview process for getting you successfully accepted? I think it's probably the most important thing. Yeah. Your story, your passion, the reason you're pursuing medicine is everything. And um, I know that I've always been good at writing, but I know that my personal statement really stood out because of my passion and because of everything that I've gone through. And that I can't, you know, in your personal statement, I can't, I'm not even ready to share that personal statement with the rest of people. I've already been contacted on Instagram, you know, saying I need advice on my personal statement. Could you let me read yours? And I'm like, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. It's too, because too wrong. Very wrong. I've called a personal statement. Like, really, it's very transparent. I've laid out my soul for them. Um, and every person that has read it, like a close friend of mine or um, an advisor at my master's program, she was top notch. She really knew what she was talking about. Um, she was blown away by reading the first draft of it. And she was like, this is absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, so I think that you can't create a story or a personal statement like that unless you have some background like if, if your entire life is just school and studying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what else do you have to offer yeah yeah that's in your scores in your gpa and in your mcat score we know that you spent a lot of time understanding the knowledge okay what else is there about you that would make you an amazing physician mm -hmm. yeah dang and list yeah. of people that wants to read the personal statement <laughs> you have to yeah more. You have to help with your personal statement I love editing and revising and I would love to help you get in and honestly I've read so many personal statements where I'm like why why are you writing this it's just it seems like they're not putting any real effort into it and it's just like your personal statement is everything especially if your stats don't stand out and even if they do your personal statement is very important and I think a lot of people don't realize that your personal statement should be like if you read the first two sentences of it you can't stop reading mm. and um, I, I remember I handed it to my sister-in-law who I absolutely love she's one of the best people in my life she read it and she was like I could not like at the end of every, every paragraph I couldn't like wait to get to the next paragraph because you left yeah. me on such a Hook. And that's what it needs to be. Not only does the first two sentences need to hook your admissions committee into reading the rest of the uh, essay, but at the end of it, they need to be like, oh my God, I need to meet this person. Like, yeah. Who is this person? I want to interview this person, like a genuine interest into who you are. And, you know, if you need help on that, I can help you. I can do yeah. it. I can edit and revise personal statements. That's amazing. What are some, so you've obviously seen a bunch of these. What are some like, I guess, top three things you see people do that you're like, nah, that's not, that's not a winning statement. <laughs> okay. So they tend to kind of say things like I really enjoy science and I help people. That's really a prerequisite to becoming a doctor. You got to enjoy science and you got to help, want to help people. Like that's, yeah, that's it's not, it's not groundbreaking. Like, <laughs> yeah. So um, I, when I set out to make my personal statement, I revised it a million times. But what I did was I set out some key points of my life that I wanted to make sure that they understood the struggles that I went through and the things that I overcome and, I, and the things that I learned in the process. But also I, I kind of uh, made a list of traits of me. Mm -hmm. that would make a good physician. Mm -hmm. And then I took those traits and I said, how can I show this 
not say it. I don't want to say that I'm very hardworking. I want to show you I'm very hardworking via a story. How do I show you that I am very empathetic? How do I show you that I'm very passionate about medicine? How do I show you that I'm very capable of achieving things? And so I had little tidbits of stories that I knew that I wanted to mention like little blurbs of it and then my task was like how do I put this together now how do yeah. I weave it to make it one short essay beautiful thing <laughs> yeah 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 I love that because I do think that the personal statement gets like held to the end like people throw it together and it's I know I'm, I'm guilty but I also know that it is very much a creative writing assignment and I, I'm a writer by background, so it was like I understood, but I, I would definitely say like, so big thing is like, I guess maybe your first tip is making sure that it stands out in the first sentence. Like it needs to be like, oh, yeah. it, step into the shoes of admission committees. They are re reading so many essays. They are bored out of their mind reading so many essays. You need to have something that stands out within the first sentence or two. Mm -hmm. I mean, you real that hook you need to work on more than anything. Yeah. 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 Okay. So good hook. Okay. I will tell you this. I'll tell you my hook. Okay. I'll tell you the hard yes. Okay. Let's go. Inside uh, scoop. First Nobody's sentence. The first sentence of my personal statement says, one last tear slid down my cheek as I signed the petition for divorce. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're hooked. <laughs> Uh, give me another sentence. Can we get another sentence? <laughs> that kind of brings me around to having a positive support system. So starting off, I'm actually glad that I didn't get into medical school when I was initially, you know, an undergrad that I would have been applying because I didn't have the support system necessary to keep my sanity and to happily become the best doctor that I could have been. I, I wasn't there. And now I have my fiance who's like, he believes in me yeah. so much more than I believe in me that he's the one that's keeping me going. And then not only that, his family is possibly the most positive family that I've ever come across in my entire life. And so having that support system is so extremely necessary. It's really about tricking yourself into believing that you can do it. And it's not a trick. It's just you're tricking yourself into believing that you can't most of the time. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there that are willing to stand up and tell you all the reasons that you will fail. Mm -hmm. But you really need somebody to tell you all the reasons you will succeed. And you may be thinking, well, I'm surrounded by a lot of negativity and I can still survive and I can still get through this. And I'm sure you can. But when things get tough, mm -hmm. which they do in medicine, they really do you really want somebody there that can bring you back perspective mm -hmm. and ground you again. So stepping away from negativity was a big success for me, just mm -hmm. not letting those type of people get in. And then finding a lot of people that were extremely positive that viewed life differently. It's all about your locus of control. Some of, some of us have an internal locus of control. You believe that you have the power to shape your destiny and others believe, you know, you have an external locus of control and you think that everything's happening to me. Right. And I can't, I don't have control over this. And you really need to have an internal locus of control. If you are an attempting, if you're, if you're attempting to go on a journey like medical school, like mm -hmm. you really need to have faith that you have what it takes mm -hmm. and you really need to keep the goal in mind. I'm not saying that, you know, negativity won't get you there. I'm not saying that you should only be tunnel visions and think, you know, that this is exactly how I'm going to get there and nothing will get in my way because things will get in your way. But being prepared about some things that could go wrong it is different from focusing on negativity. A negative right. focus will not get you to your goal. So if right. you find yourself surrounded by people that often get your vision focused to the negative side, step away. Yeah. Do whatever you can to center yourself. I meditate a lot. It is something that has transformed my life. And it's like 15 minutes a day. And it really aligns myself, sets my vibrations, and it allows me to take inspired action, which I think has stumbled me upon a lot of my successes, just because I'm in the right mindset. When you have this positive mindset, opportunities come to you because you wouldn't see them in a negative right. mindset. Exactly. 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 That's very important. I love it. I love it. 